uh, Chiel Yap. Uh, with his talk on the click number of Paley uh, and Paley graphs and generalized Paley graphs. So uh, would you please stop your sharing? Yeah, okay, yeah. And now we have, uh, yeah. So here is the presentation and the floor is yours, please. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for being my patient. And I'm really happy to uh, give a talk in this algebraic graph theory uh, workshop. So today I will talk about some recent progress on improving the true alpha bound on the thick number of polygraphs and generalized polygraphs. Um, and I think Shamiao already mentioned a lot of uh, basic definitions, so I will just quickly go through them. Uh, so we use the same set of notations. So P is a prime and Q is power of P. Uh, FQ is the final field with Q elements. Uh, FQ plus is the ability group of FQ and FQ star is the multiplicity group of FQ. Um, and similarly, uh, the polygraph is just a special polygraph defined on the ability group of the final field with the connection set in the set of squares in the field. And uh, because we want to talk about the fix and uh, the tick number, in polygraph, so we need to make sure that our graph is undirected. So that's exactly this congruence condition. Q is congruent to one module four. Um, and uh, uh, similarly, we can just replace squares by these powers, and uh, we can get the so-called generalized polygraphs. And I believe uh, they were first introduced by Cohen in the 80s, but they were uh, we discovered by a few groups of researchers um, a few times. Um, okay. So uh, let's do some normalization of this kind of param parameters. Uh, so we are talking about these powers in FQ star. Um, and uh, if we have two giant polygraphs, GPQD and GPQD prime, such that the GCD between D and Q minus one and the GCD between D prime and Q minus one are the same, we can just replace D and D prime by the, by the GCD uh, because basically uh, the D's power and D prime's power are exactly the same. So uh, with this normalization, we can just assume that D divides Q minus one so that uh, we can make sense of these powers in FQ star. Uh, and again, we need to make sure that our graph is an undirected graph. So we also need uh, to assume that uh, minus one is a this power in FQ star, uh, which means that Q minus one would be is an even number. So uh, in the following discussion, I will implicitly assume that Q is congruent to one module to B. Uh, and of course, we will assume that D is greater than one. Otherwise, uh, our graph is just a complete graph. So it's not interesting at all. Um, and uh, um, uh, this kind of graphs uh, were started uh, and uh, they appear in uh, many uh, papers. And uh, in particular, they uh, connect many branches of mathematics. Uh, in particular, uh, computers, algebra, graph theory, finite geometry, and analytic analysis. Uh, and uh, in today's talk, I will also mention um, a few aspects uh, to study polygraphs and generalized polygraphs. Um, okay, so in this talk, we will focus on estimating the quick number of polygraphs. And uh, just to recall that the quick number is always is often denoted by omega g, and uh, that's the size of a maximum quick of g. And uh, finding a reasonably good upper bound uh, for the quick number of p graph is an open problem, not only in algebraic graph theory, but also in a I'll, I'll, I'm really sorry, but it is a noisy a little bit. So uh, I don't know, is it possible to make something uh, so is the sound not clear? Not clear, yeah. It is okay. not clear. Yeah. Uh, uh, how about now? 
Is it better? Uh, not really, not so much. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> uh, maybe I can... Uh, maybe I can rejoin too. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, sorry for that. Uh, do you think the voice is better? Oh, it is much more better. Okay, okay. Good, very nice. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Luckily, we didn't cover anything important so far. Um, okay, so... Uh, okay, so I'm talking about uh, that uh, finding a... A uh, good upper bound for kick number is not only a uh, open problem in algebraic graph theory, but it also has uh, some connections with additive complex and analytic number theory. So that means that uh, people working on uh, these three research areas are all interested in this question. And it's known to be very difficult to improve the trivial upper bound on the kick number. And, uh, as far as I know, even improving the trivial upper bound by one uh, already requires some non-trivial effort. And I don't think there is any uh, simple proof to improve the trivial upper bound even by one. Um, so before talking about the improvement on the upper bound, I would like to first mention some uh, known bounds on the quick number uh, and uh, also the conjecture bound. Uh, so first, uh, there are some no lower bounds due to Cohen, uh, which basically says that the lower bound is at least half times log D uh, Q plus a constant. And this is because um, we can imagine that uh, Joanna's petty graph behave uh, like a random graph with edge density one over D. Then, we would expect that the kick number is at least uh, something like log Q. And uh, uh, there are some better lower bounds based on uh, construction for number theory. And uh, the observation is that if we consider uh, the least quadratic non residue module P, and we call that little mp, then uh, if we consider the set uh, one, two, up to MP, then this actually forms a clique. And uh, the reason is that if we consider the difference between any two elements in this uh, set, then the absolute value is bounded by uh, little MP minus one, which is a uh, quadratic residue by the definition of little MP, because little MP is the least quadratic non residue. So this forms a clique. And uh, Estimating the least quadratic non residue is a very important problem in analytic number theory. And in particular, we have some uh, lower bound on the uh, least quadratic non residue. And uh, based on this observation, we also have a corresponding lower bound on the kick number of petty graph. Uh, so in 1990, Graham and Rio showed that there are infinitely many primes such as little mp is at least a constant times log p, log, log, log p. So that also applies to the kick number of petty graph. And uh, if we assume the generalized Riemann hypothesis, the result by Montgomery shows that this can be further improved to log p times log, log p. So that's the lower bound. 
And uh, for the upper bound, uh, that's the focus of this talk. Uh, and uh, just very briefly, the triple upper bound is given by uh, square root P and uh, the best upper bound is given by square root P over two plus one. And that we, uh, we will talk about the proof, uh, a sketch of the proof of this result and also some generalizations. Uh, so you can see that there is a huge gap between the best known lower bound, which is roughly log P, uh, like log square, but the uh, best known upper bound is still of the order O square root P. So there is a huge uh, gap. And uh, a, a widely believed conjecture is that the kick number is bounded by P3 epsilon for any epsilon greater than zero. And uh, some people even conjecture that uh, this lower bound uh, given by Montgomery is actually tight. So this is perhaps more ambitious, uh, but uh, again, uh, so far, we cannot make any progress on this kind of conjecture. Um, okay, so that's the known bound and the conjecture bound. So next, let's, let me talk about the chief upper bound. Um, so there are many ways to prove this chief upper bound square root Q on the deep heavy graph defined over F cube. And uh, here is uh, a simple shelf content proof. Uh, uh, basically, we can con consider a clique uh, denoted by uh, v1, v2 up to vn in this uh, generalized petty graph. And we consider g to be a primitive root of f cube. And uh, we consider this set w to be the um, combination of vi and g with j for all possible pairs i and j. Uh, suppose we can show that all elements in this set W are distinct from each other, then that means the set W would have size uh, exactly n squared. But we know that W is a subset of F cube, which means that n squared is bounded by Q, uh, which means that n is at most root Q. So we just need to check that uh, all elements in W are pairwise different from each other. Uh, so suppose uh, we have two elements, vi plus gvj equal to vi prime plus gvj prime. Uh, then we can rearrange the equation to get uh, vi minus vi prime equal to g times vj prime minus vj. Then we know that the left-hand side is the this power and the right-hand side is g times the this power. Uh, but notice that G is a primitive root. So that means G cannot be a this power. So that means the only uh, situation where this could occur is that both sides equal to zero, which exactly means that I equal to I prime and J equal to J prime. So that's established the proof of this claim. Uh, so there are other proofs of this uh, trivial of a bound. So one can use finite geometry one can also use scatter sums for analytic number theory. And uh, we can also have some algebraic graph theory approaches to uh, prove this chip upper bound. Uh, so for example, in the case of petty graph, we can apply the ratio bound or the click co click bound. And uh, more generally, if we know that this giant's petty graph is strongly regular, then we know it's angle values, so we can again apply a ratio bound or like half bound bound to get the same upper bound. Uh, but what's difficult is that, uh, so we have many, many different ways to prove this two upper bound, but it seems there is no easy way to even improve this by one. So that makes the problem difficult. Um, so, before uh, introducing some uh, recent progress on the improvement of the, this chip upper bound, uh, I think it's natural to first try to understand when is this chip upper bound tight. So that will be the topic of the next few slides. Uh, so 
Uh, first, it's easy to see that if Q is a non square, then the uh, true upper bound is never tight. Because if Q is a non square, then square root Q is not an integer, but we know that the tick number must be an integer. Uh, so the true upper bound is never tight when Q is a non square. Uh, and uh, uh, we can also try to understand when is the true upper bound tight when Q is a square. And uh, there's a result by, uh, uh, by Brower, uh, Doman, and Ridley uh, in 1988, which says that if Q is a square and D dy square root Q, uh, square root Q plus one, then the click number is actually given by square root Q. And uh, that's something Shamil uh, has mentioned in his talk. And basically the reason that the click number uh, is equal to root Q or equally the true upper bound is tight, is because we have a subfield construction for this click. So uh, it's easy to show that the subfield uh, with square root Q element forms a click if and only if D divides uh, square root Q plus one. So, uh, uh, and uh, actually in this paper, uh, they also show that if D dy square root Q, uh, square root Q plus one, then the chromatic number of GIS pedigraph GPQD is also equal to square root Q, uh, basically because of this subfield construction of the click. Uh, and uh, it turned out that the converse is also true. So that's the result by uh, Snyder and Schober a few years ago. And uh, they show that uh, if the click number and the chromatic number are both equal to square root Q, then we uh, can show that D divides uh, square root Q plus one. Uh, and uh, the proof was based on uh, group theory. Uh, so essentially it's used something called synchronization property for uh, permutation groups. So essentially they treated generalized paragraphs as the orbital graph of certain permutation groups. Uh, okay, so uh, there's also the result uh, by Borkhaus and uh, Sikli that uh, Shamel also mentioned, uh, which says that in the case D dy uh, square root Q, uh, square root Q plus one, uh, actually, not only the click number is square root Q, uh, we can also try to characterize uh, maximum clicks. And uh, essentially, uh, the only maximum click is given by the subfield. And of course, uh, we can consider the affine image of the subfield. Uh, but essentially, the only maximum click is given by the subfield. Uh, and based on this kind of result, uh, it's natural to uh, conjecture that if D does not dy square root Q plus one, then there is no click of size root Q. Uh, because uh, basically this lemma says that uh, the subfield forms a click if and only if D dy uh, square root Q plus one. And uh, this result by Brockhaus and Sikolai shows that if D dy square root Q plus one, then the only maximum click is essentially given by the subfield. So in other words, it's natural to um, conjecture that the click number is given by root Q if and only if the subfield forms a click. Uh, and uh, actually we can confirm this conjecture uh, so that's one of my uh, main results in this talk. Uh, so basically I show that the kick number of GPQD is equal to square root Q if and only if D divides uh, root Q plus one. So this gives a uh, necessary and sufficient condition for the true upper bound to be tight. Uh, so in other words, if D does not divide square root Q plus one, then we can improve the true upper bound by one. Uh, so of course, this result refine the result uh, in this uh, slide. So basically I show that it's unnecessary to consider the chromatic number. 
Um, okay, so uh, I will try to give a very rough idea of this proof. But before that, I would like to um, motivate the, the idea of the proof by talking about something related to spatial graph theory. And uh, the motivation is that uh, we have many algebraic graph theory bound to bound the kick number. And usually for those kind of bound, we need to have some understanding of the spatial of the graph. Uh, so it turned out that when D divides square root Q plus one, which is the good case where the click number is equal to Q and uh, essentially the only maximum click is given by the subfield. Uh, in that case, we can actually show that GPQD forms a strongly regular graph. And uh, the reason is that uh, basically it's come from a more general construction that Shamil mentioned, uh, basically, in that case, the connection set can be uh, viewed as the union of synchrotomic classes. So uh, we can just apply a result by Brower, Wilson, and Shang in 1999 to show that this graph is strongly regular. And uh, in their paper, uh, the proof that this kind of graph is strongly regular is that they proved that uh, the the spectrum of this kind of graph is very simple because we can show that there are only exactly uh, three distinct angle values. And uh, because we are working in a KD graph, it's actually not too difficult to write down what are the angle values. Uh, so it's, known, it's well known that the angle values correspond to uh, cattle sums over the connection set. And uh, in our case, because our underlying field is the additive group of the finite field FQ, so the corresponding cutter should be an additive cutter. And uh, our connection set is the set of these powers. So an angle value of a generalized polygraph GPQD has the form, uh, this is a cutter sum, additive cutter sum over the set of square, uh, say the set of these powers. Uh, so in other words, we are uh, summing over a, a DTIC cutter over a multiplicative set or a set with multiplicative structure. And uh, the standard way to deal with this is to convert this cutter, uh, convert this in incomplete cutter sum into a complete cutter sum by using orthogonality relations. And uh, when we are doing that, it's natural to consider the so-called Gauss sum, uh, which are essentially the inner product between uh, a dictic cutter and uh, a multiplicative cutter. And formally it's defined as uh, like G chi psi, but chi is a multiplicative cutter and psi is uh, a dictic cutter. And this is defined as the uh, sum of the product between chi and psi summing over the whole field. So uh, uh, basically, if we want to compute the angle values of GPQD, then we need to understand uh, the behavior of this kind of Gauss sum. Uh, so uh, it's a well-known result that if this multiplicative cutter chi is a non-trivial multiplicative cutter, then the modulus of the Gaussian is always given by square root Q. Uh, but we need to uh, compute the angle value exactly, or at least give a, a bound on the angle values. So uh, this kind of um, information on the modulus is not uh, sufficient. And uh, typically we need to compute Gaussian explicitly. And uh, in general, that's a very difficult question. Uh, however, in a special family of Gauss, uh, for a special family of Gaussian, namely uh, semi-protic Gaussian. So that's uh, something Shamil have mentioned about semi-protic uh, secretomy classes. So they are, uh, basically the same object. And uh, 
in our case that uh, D divides square root cube plus one, uh, this kind of Gaussian actually correspond to semi primitive Gaussian. And in that case, we can use the Kerberger theorem to find explicit formulas for Gaussian. And uh, once we know the explicit uh, formula for this Gaussian, we can go back to our uh, cat sums to compute the angle value. And uh, that's how Brower, Wilson, and Stang show that uh, this kind of construction of k graph on union cyclotomic classes uh, is a strongly regular graph. Uh, but in general, if we do not assume that D does not, uh, if we do not assume that D divides root Q plus one, then it's hard to uh, compute the Gaussian explicitly, uh, which means that it's also difficult to compute the angle values of uh, a generalized pedigree GPQD. And uh, let's somehow motivate our proof. Uh, so basically, we would like to see some connection between maximum clicks and Gaussian. So even if we don't, even if we can't explicitly compute Gaussian, uh, at least we can gain some information about uh, the property of Gaussian based on the maximum clicks. And uh, we can show that if we have a click of size QQ in the generalized pedigree, then the corresponding Gaussian must be really nice. And uh, uh, here, chi would be chosen to be a multiplicative character with order D because we are working on uh, GPQD. So the connection step is the D's power. So if we just apply this kind of um, um, ideas, then it's natural to consider chi to be a multiplicative character with order D. And uh, uh, um, so we can show that the corresponding Gaussian must be very nice. And uh, uh, a result of Ivan's state that if this kind of Gaussian are all very nice, then we must be then we must be in the case of semi primitive um, Gaussian, which means that D divides uh, square root cube plus one. Uh, so, uh, just to summarize what I have mentioned so far. So if the click number is equal to square root Q, then the Gaussian must be nice. And because the Gaussian are nice, then it must be semi primitive, which implies that D divides uh, square root Q plus one. And uh, that's how we prove this result. Uh, and of course, I skip many uh, technical details, but I hope the high level idea are clear. Um, okay, so um, so next, uh, we will move to uh, graph with non-square order. So. Uh, we have categorized all graphs uh, whose click number is equal to the trivial alpha bound. And next, we would like to focus on the case that Q is a non-square. So when Q is a non-square, the square root Q alpha bound is never tight because square root Q is not an integer. And uh, uh, as far as I know, all uh, improvements so far use the fact that square root Q is not an integer. So you may think that this is a trivial statement that because Q is a non-square, then square root Q must be, uh, I mean, a square root Q is not an integer. But this fact is actually crucial in all of the proof I uh, have seen so far. And in particular, we can first try to look at this result by Bertolt, uh, Matarushi, and Ruja. Uh, in 2013, where they managed to improve this true upper bound by one, uh, not for all Q, but for approximately uh, three quarters non-square Q. And uh, the reason that they can conclude that this whole for many Q is that uh, square root Q is not an integer. In fact, they consider the fractional part of square root Q 
and they show that uh, the fractional part of square root Q uh, uh, has a uniform uh, distribution. So uh, basically we can have some statistic on the behavior of the fractional part of square root Q. And uh, under certain assumptions on the size of the fractional part of square root Q, uh, they managed to improve this bound by one. Okay. So by the way, uh, I guess based on this result, I would like to uh, highlight that this result is uh, at least non-trivial. Or uh, at least there is no simple proof based on uh, this kind of result. And uh, uh, a few years ago, uh, uh, this result has been extended to uh, all pseudo paragraph with non square order. And uh, basically the bounding gap is exactly the same. And uh, uh, this proof works for any shadow paragraph because uh, the result does not use the fact that we are working in a paragraph. So in other words, this is like using the special graph theory where we only care about the uh, special of the graph instead of the, uh, uh, the real structure of the graph. And essentially they improve the ratio bound or equally half one bound on the kick number by uh, by one for about three quarters non square q. Um, okay, so uh, the proof by Bacot, Bethelusi and uh, Ruja was uh, based on a careful study of Catter's sum. And this is a proof based on uh, algebraic graph theory. Uh, and uh, so, Basically, until 2019, the best known result is that the kick number is at most square root Q minus one. So it's just uh, one better than the true alpha bound. Uh, and then uh, three years ago, Hansen and Pagetis made a breakthrough in this um, topic where they managed to improve the true alpha bound by a multiplicity constant. And uh, what we can what they can show is that if we consider Chai's paragraph uh, GPPD, then the quick number can be improved from square root P to square root P over D. So they improve the true alpha bound by a uh, multiplicative constant, which is equal to square root one over D. And uh, uh, later, uh, my advisor, uh, Joseph Soimoshi, and his two students, uh, Daniel D. Benedetto and uh, Ethan White, derived the same upper bound using uh, finite geometry, where I will also briefly mention in the end of the talk if I have time. Uh, okay, so basically, their result is for uh, paragraph and generalized paragraph with prime order, but it's but their method cannot be uh, directly applied to paragraph and generalized paragraph with uh, prime power order. So uh, that's my contribution. So I'm able to show that if Q is a non-square and D divides uh, P minus one, then uh, we have a similar upper bound on the quick number. And uh, for this assumption that D divides uh, P minus one, uh, if Q happens to be a prime, then this condition D divides P minus one is satisfied because, uh, because this condition is needed for this graph to be well defined. So that's something I mentioned earlier, which we always assume that Q is congruent to one modulo two D. And uh, if Q is just a prime, then we have D divides P minus one. So in particular, this result generalizes the result by Hansen and Pagetis. And uh, in general, we may not have this uh, condition. We may not have this nice divisibility condition. So in that case, we can only uh, provide a much uh, worse bound, but it's still 
much better compared to the cheap of the bond. Uh, so I can show that uh, if we consider uh, GIS pedigraph uh, GPQD, then its kick number is bounded by a square root Q minus a function on P, which uh, grows slightly uh, slower than P for almost all non-square uh, Q. So in particular here, I can uh, prove that this hold for uh, square root Q minus P to the 0.999, uh, if I take this function to be P to the 0.999. And again, this is a result about the, like the statistics. And uh, here we also use the equal distribution of the fractional part of square root Q. So again, uh, we use the fact that uh, Q is a non-square implies that square root Q is a non-integer. And that's a crucial uh, fact which we use. Uh, okay, and uh, if you prefer more explicit upper bound, uh, so here are some uh, explicit upper bound. Uh, if Q is common to one module four and Q is a non-square, then uh, we can consider giant's pedigraph uh, so, uh, so this is just PQ, the pedigraph, and uh, we can improve the chill up one square root Q to 0.708 uh, square root Q, plus some lower order term. Uh, and similarly, we can consider uh, three pedigraph. Uh, by the way, I guess here it should be GP, uh, Q3 and GPQD. Sorry for the typos. Uh, so for three pedigraphs, we can also improve the true upper bound square root cube to this upper bound uh, 0 0.718 times square root cube plus some lower order term. Uh, so here you may notice that here, this number 0 0.718 is actually larger than 0 0.708. And you may find it uh, strange because a uh, pedigraph has edge density half while three pedigraph has edge density one third. So it's natural to expect that the kick number of, of a three pedigraph is actually smaller than the kick number of a, a pedigraph because the edge density is smaller. Uh, but it turned out that usually when we are working on giant pedigraph, it requires some extra effort. And uh, there are many reasons. Uh, so one particular reason is that squares are always uh, nicer than uh, like uh, three, uh, three powers or cubics. Um, and uh, uh, for example, we know that pedigraph are shelf complementary, but uh, cubic pedigraph or three pedigraph are not. And uh, uh, one way to establish the lower bound for pedigraph is actually to consider diagonal Ramsey number. And if you want, if you want to do the same thing for a uh, three pedigraph, then we need to consider like multi-dimensional Ramsey number, which is um, much harder than diagonal Ramsey number. So that's one reason that usually working in giant pedigraph is much harder than uh, pedigraphs. And another reason is that if you look at this result, uh, it's also the case that for generalized pedigraph, we get a much, weas much uh, weaker result. And only in some special case like D device P minus one, we can recover the same um, result. And I will mention why we need to assume this um, to get this result. Uh, okay. So in general, if D divides P minus one, then we can show that the true upper bound can be improved to square root Q over D. Um, okay, so next I will try to uh, um, mention some basic idea of the proof of this kind of result. And uh, the main tools for this kind of result are polynomial method. Uh, so I think recently there were many breakthrough in computerics uh, which are based on uh, like polynomial method. So uh, 
essentially those kind of papers are relatively short. So they just cons constructed some very special polynomial that capture the uh, essence of the problem. And then uh, we basically we convert the problem of the graph or some uh, extremely complex object to the study of the polynomial. And uh, we know that a polynomial is much easier to study compared to a graph. So that's perhaps the high level idea. And uh, I think the most difficult part is to come up with the right polynomial. And that's something uh, that requires many effort. So uh, in our case, we will consider uh, two types of polynomial. And the first type of polynomial is uh, uh, a baby case of the so-called step north method. And uh, the second method is related to the direction set of a point set uh, on the affine Galois plane, where we have a standard tools to study the size of the direction set. And the standard tool is given by relay polynomials with certain extension. Um, and uh, because we are working on finite field, we have to pay extra uh, attention to the polynomial we constructed. Because if we consider those polynomials embedded in R, then maybe it's okay, it's always non-zero. But in FP, the characteristic is P. So it's possible that the polynomial we constructed is um, is actually zero because all coefficients are divisible by P. So that's something we have to pay extra um, attention. And uh, uh, roughly speaking, uh, for this kind of polynomials, it came from some uh, like binomial expansions. So we have to understand the behavior of binomial coefficient modulo P. And uh, the rough idea is that if we construct a polynomial which happens to be identically zero, then we wish that we can try to perturb our coefficient or the uh, or perturb the polynomial a little bit so that we can get a non-zero polynomial. Uh, because if our polynomial is trivially zero, then we cannot get any information. Uh, and uh, to understand the behavior of binomial coefficient modulo p, there's a very nice result due to uh, Lucas. So that's a um, very beautiful result in that in elementary number theory, which says that if we want to compute m choose n modulo p, then we just need to write m and n in their base p representation uh, in this way. And uh, we just need to consider the binomial coefficient in each component. And then we just need to take the product. So uh, if we know the base P representation of M and N, then it's fairly easy to see whether this is uh, congruent to zero or congruent to non-zero. Uh, because for right hand side, it's easy to compute uh, whether uh, M, MJ choose NJ is congruent to zero or not, because MJ and NJ are both uh, between zero and P minus one. Um, okay, so let's talk about a toy version of uh, step North method, uh, which was the key idea of the proof by Hansen and Pachetis. Uh, so the idea is that we consider a maximum click uh, with element A1, A2 up to AN. Uh, we try to construct some special polynomial, which is non-zero and has a relatively low degree, such that each element in the click uh, vanish with a high multiplicity. So suppose that the degree of f is equal to d, and each ai is a root with multiplicity at least k, then uh, we can give a lower bound on the number of roots, which is equal to n times k, 
And also we have an upper bound on the number root, which is given by the degree. So we have NK is bounded by D, which means that N is at most D over K. So now we want to give a good upper bound on the uh, kick number, which is N, which means that we want D over K to be as small as possible. So that's why we consider a polynomial with low degree. So D is small. And we want the multiplicity of each root to be large. So K is large, so that D over K is minimized. So that's the basic idea. And to check that each AI has a high multiplicity, we can just uh, like try to consider the Taylor expansion of the polynomial or equally uh, considering taking derivatives, uh, taking higher order derivatives. Uh, but again, we are working in a field with characteristic P. So, you know, if you take uh, like piece order derivative, then you always get zero. So that's bad because it's possible that this multiplicity k is actually greater than p. Uh, but fortunately, there is a way to resolve this issue. So you just need to replace uh, the standard derivative by Hasse derivative, or sometimes known as hyper derivative. Then we can resolve this issue. So basically, when we are taking the derivative, we also need to introduce some binomial coefficient to avoid the characteristic issue. Um, okay, so as I said before, uh, we have to worry about the, whether our construction gives a zero polynomial or non-zero polynomial. So um, I will talk about uh, this result which is a generalization of the result by Hansen and Petrides. So this serves as an intermediate step uh, to get uh, upper bound on the kick number. Uh, and basically here we have this kind of assumption on the binomial coefficient uh, because we want the polynomial we constructed to be non-zero. And uh, uh, the statement is the following. We take capital N to be the click number, and we take little n to be a, a number which is uh, at most capital N, such that this uh, binomial coefficient is non-vanishing. Then we can conclude that uh, capital N minus one times little n is at most Q minus one over D. So let's first look at the case where uh, Q is a prime. Uh, so in that case, we can actually just take little n to be capital N because we can show that uh, if Q is a prime, then these two numbers are both less than P. So it's clear that this binomial coefficient won't be zero modulo P. So in that case, we just have a capital N square is bounded by P over D roughly. And if you take the square root, then we just obtain the upper bound on the kick number. So you can also imagine that this kind of bound is obtained by solving certain quadratic equations. And uh, in general, if Q is not a prime, then we really need to worry about this issue. Um, okay, so let me just we briefly mentioned the proof of this result. Uh, so I won't have time to go to the uh, details because it requires a lot of computations. Uh, so basically we consider this kind of polynomial. Uh, so this is the sum of CI times X minus AI to the power N minus one plus Q minus one over D and then minus one. So I think the the basic motivation to study this kind of polynomial is that if X is an element from the click, then X minus AI to the power Q minus one over D is actually one. Uh, so th that's perhaps the advantage of using this polynomial. So you can see that this is a polynomial with degree at most like N minus one plus Q minus one over D, but really, if X is an element in the click, then it's really a low degree polynomial. Like it has degree like N minus one because 
these these months are already just uh, just go out because we have this being a this power. So that means we are really working a very low degree polynomial. So we have many freedom to choose this kind of coefficient ci so that we can uh, get uh, our desired uh, uh, condition. Namely, we want each AI to uh, vanish with a high multiplicity. And uh, if you work out the computations, then you will find that the exact assumption we want is this kind of assumption. So this is a, like a random uh, system. So this kind of CI is unique. And uh, uh, if we do a lot of computations, then we can show that the degree is actually given by Q minus over D. And we can show that each rule with each root would uh, vanish with the high multiplicity. Then we would have a lower bound on the number root. And also we have an upper bound on the number root, which is the degree of the polynomial. So uh, we can get this, um, uh, we can get this result. Okay, so that's the intermediate step. Uh, and finally, we can try to use this intermediate step to get our bound on the peak number. And uh, basically we just need to find some little n such that this binomial coefficient is not vanishing. And of course we want our little n to be as large as possible so that we can get a better bound on capital N. And uh, the idea is that we try to uh, write down this kind of numbers in base P and we apply Lucas theorem to uh, greatly to use a great greedy algorithm to pick our little n. Uh, but this, of course, depends on the base p representation of this number q minus one over p. So, say in the simplest simplest case that d divides p minus one, then we know that. Uh, the base p representation of q minus one over d is uh, fairly simple. Basically, every digit is p minus one over d. So in that case, it's easy to apply Lucas theorem to find some little n, uh, such as this whole. And uh, in fact, in that case, we can pick some little n to be very, very close to capital N. And uh, that means, roughly speaking, we get capital N squared to be bounded by uh, q over d. And uh, by taking the square root, we just recover this upper bound on the kick number. And in the case that uh, D is small, for example, D is three, we have a limited number of different patterns for the base P representation of Q minus one or D. So we can just apply, uh, we can just consider each case and then consider the worst bound we can get. Uh, so that's how we, um, get the kick number for a uh, three petty graph. And you may imagine that if D is very, very large and uh, if D has many, many different prime devices, then this kind of strategy is not practical because we have many, many different cases. And each, in each case, we need to develop a different greedy algorithm. So that's um, difficult. And uh, yes, I am running out of time. So let me just quickly mention um, another approach, which is um, using finite geometry to improve the chip upper bound. And uh, the basic idea is to consider the direction set determined by uh, a point set. Uh, and I'm sorry for that, but I'm just uh, go directly into the proof of this result. So that's the result by has and prejudice. So uh, my advisor and his two students uh, provide a simple proof for this result. And basically their idea is to consider the direction set determined by A times A, where A is a click in the generalized petty graph. And uh, the direction set is just the set of slopes determined by this kind of point. And if you write that down, it's just A minus A over A minus A. So now because A is a click, so A minus A 
is a subset of these powers. And uh, here, A minus A is also a, a subset of these powers. And because these powers are closed under taking B wishes, so again, the direction set is a subset of these powers. And uh, of course, we need to consider some um, extra element like zero and infinity. So uh, we can show that if we have a click, then the direction set determined by the Cartesian product A times A is fairly small. And uh, if we can provide a lower bound on the number of directions, then again, we have a quadratic equation, uh, quadratic inequalities, which we can solve. So that's how they prove this result. Uh, and finally, uh, in the case of, of uh, by the way, this is the direction result I just mentioned. Uh, so this works pretty well when Q is a prime. And if Q is not a prime, then we have to uh, be much more careful because there is so-called the subfield obstruction. But uh, I can still show that under some very special assumptions, this result still holds. So that means we can apply a similar argument for GPQD, uh, but we can just obtain a much uh, weaker result. Namely, we can improve the triple bound by say P2E.999. Okay, so uh, that's the end of the I talk. Uh, I'm sorry for the technical issues and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much for a very nice talk. Uh, please questions to, to the speaker. What do you hope to prove next? Uh, so, of course, we would like to improve this kind of bound. So we are far from the conjectured upper bound. But it seems for this kind of method, uh, we are always solving a quadratic equation. So that means we cannot get something better than like O square root Q. So perhaps we need to consider other type of polynomial and we can perhaps come up with something like a cubic equation, a cubic inequality, then we can get something like Q to the one third. So the limitation of this method is certainly a square root Q over some constant. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Okay, if not, then let us thank again, uh, Kyle, uh, for this very interesting technical but very interesting talk.